Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech where we've got some repairs to do. So let's tick forward a little bit here. Hello accidental smugglers. We will... EC5 ammunition? Honestly, I don't feel like we need that. We'll just return it. Okay. We'll get a thousand C bills. Sure. Not like that's, you know, impactful or anything, but... I guess we'll take it. So we will continue ticking forward here. Work on the Centurion is now complete. The repaired mech bay is complete. The Jaeger is still two days out. We should definitely queue up an engineering upgrade, though. Now. These aren't the best options. Actually, reduction of stored inventory items might not be too bad. Our monthly costs are getting up there. And an overall reduction of that might be useful. This would just be two tech points. I feel like we're doing fine on tech points. And Mech Warrior training would be great. There's no doubt about that. That would be pretty cheap, too. 385. However, I feel like storage space is our better bet. So we're going to get started on that. And that will also enable getting these monthly upkeep reductions, which will be another decent chunk of reduction of costs. Now, this over here is all well and good. We don't really need this immediately. So I think we should probably work on cost reduction. Maybe grab this high capacity power conduit. Maybe. Definitely grab this training module, max out recreation, max out med bays, and then come back to drop tonnage. Unless we start hitting the the restrictions again. Which we might. I don't know. Regardless, we should definitely hop over to our barracks and look to do a little training. Although we do need to take forward those two days. So let's do that first. Because some of those mech warriors may still be getting some training XP. It's possible. And let's see what we need to do for training here. A point of tactics for Bear Claw? Sure. El Duce for Guts? Yep, we'll do that. Falcon? Same thing. Do it. Jinx? Same thing. Okay. Lots of Guts coming in here. Ooh, Kraken with the gunnery. Hmm. The question is... Blackjack, Centurion, and Nidhogg? Kraken's our Nidhogg pilot, right? Hang on. I'm just going to choose a random... Like, we're not, we're not going to do this. I'm going to choose a random contract here just to check to see what he's piloting. Oh, this is... This is a weight limit. We can't do this one. <laughs> this one. Again, we're not going to do it. But... We just want to see what Kraken is piloting. Yeah, he's piloting the Nidhogg. So with that being the case, we need to think about what gunnery trait we want Kraken to get here. I'm here. Plus one accuracy, plus 10 to clustering roll modifiers, plus 10% to called shot multiplier. The Nidhogg doesn't generate heat. Or recoil. Or have any weapons that jams. So we obviously take Warlord. Mech warrior training complete. Okay. Lord Daki is fine. Scrub could grab a point of guts. Training confirmed, Commander. And Tarbox is fine, and Woody is fine. Okay, so now we can properly deploy, except I clipped, clicked on the store for some reason. <laughs> we can see there's a Clint available. Why would we want that? These are... Very mediocre missions. Okay. Like, very mediocre. Although, an assault mech, a Lyran assault mech for the planetary government. I like the sounds of this. I want max salvage for this one. So we'll take maximum salvage. We should have absolutely no problem taking this down. Now, we should have a weight limit of 600 tons right now, I believe. So we should be completely fine bringing the Blackjack, which does rock the dual ER PPCs. Right, it had that heat issue that we never actually fixed. We should maybe think about doing that. 
I'm not going to tick forward for it, but I'm going to go ahead and fix this right now, now that we have the double heat sinks. So what we want to do is we want to drop that ER large laser. There's absolutely no point. And we want to put in a few double heat sinks here. So we can fit a number of those. Like that. Now, we have enough space for one more double heat sink, although we do not have a double heat sink. Oh yeah, they removed the store page from here. I don't think there were any there anyway, so that's okay. Our heat efficiency is now far better. The question is, do we have a second clan ERPPC in here? It's just a regular ERPPC. Do we want to drop the clan ERPPC for heat purposes? For a regular ERPPC? That does help the weight. We could do that. Now we'd have half a ton remaining. We'd have to figure out what we wanted to do with that. Hmm. Well, we could always move a heat sink over into this arm and then place a small laser in here and then drop a little bit of armor in these legs, something along the lines of that. I'd want to drop one more like that. We could do that. That will take five days, and we're not going to wait on that. But that's going to be a far better mech. I'll get it this good. Now, we're going to deploy here, and we're going to deploy on this same mission. That would be this one right here. Mech salvage. We're just not going to bring the blackjack. I just wanted to get that going while I was thinking about it. Maybe we bring the striker, although maybe we just bring the Vulcan. I mean, the Vulcan is really bad, right? I feel like we're better off with the striker. Do I have anybody who can really pilot the striker? Probably not. These are both mech vehicles. I'm just checking to see affinities here. Yeah, mediocre. I wish there was a way to reset affinities. <laughs> that would be nice. But alas, we're okay. Yes, I'm aware of this. Okay, so the Blackjack will be available next mission. This mission, it is not. But next mission, it'll be kind of filling a similar role as the Guillotine right now, but better. The Guillotine is better if it can close in, right? But the Blackjack will be better at those long-range pot shots. We do, unfortunately, lose out on the 20 damage from the clan ERPPCs, or the single clan ERPPC, but I feel like the trade-off of heat means that we can fire the two regular ERPPCs much more regularly, and by extension, hopefully that will average out to a, an increase. I don't know if it will or not, but it should be at least comparable damage levels, if not better. And yeah, ideally we would have the clan ERPPC on there and use the extra ton for an additional double heatsink, but we don't have that double heatsink, so that'll just have to be as it is. So the question is, just how many assault mechs are we going to be up against here? I mean, we're looking for good salvage. Hopefully we'll get some. Okay, so we need to destroy enemy forces. We've got an interesting opportunity for you, Commander. We've recently detected a major engine signature on the planet, probably an Assault Class mech. We can't have an Assault Class Lyran mech that big wandering around loose, and we'd like you to handle it. The interesting part is that we've also detected another Assault power-up. And it's a different mech entirely, and it's closing with the target. It's possible you can just swoop in and pick up the pieces. We're prepared to offer generous salvage terms. Taking down Assault Max isn't going to be easy, Commander, but if we can play them off against each other, we might make out quite well on this one. Yeah, they're going to focus on us. That's just the way this works. <laughs> initiated. Okay, we're near where the engine signature was detected. Enemy unit should be in this area. It's a big mech that we're tangling with here. Okay. That was my hand being in the wrong place and hitting the E key instead of the W key. Excellent. We could drop right around here, or we could drop potentially up here. I wouldn't mind dropping in the water here. We can make our way up. 
as necessary. Okay, let's see what we got here. An Icarus 2. Okay. Who fights a Zeus. And an Orion. I'm assuming there's another enemy up here somewhere. And we don't know where the hostile force is going to be. There must be another enemy. Okay. I think we reserve here. And let them move first. Move something, anyway. Yeah, the is rear arc, but... And, and I'd love to shoot the rear arc. But unfortunately, with all those evasive pips, it's not worth it. Let's see what they do. The Zeus turns around. I'm being flanked. Fires at the Nidhogg. It's never going to hit. Even if it did, the Nidhogg probably is going to be fine. Okay. That was one delayed X-Pulse laser. Oh my. <laughs> that was very delayed. That Zeus built up a fair amount of heat there. Okay. Let's go ahead and close in here. I would normally be very interested in this rear arc attack, but... Not so much right now. Roger that. So we'll just fire on this guy. Not do anything. That's fairly expected. Okay. What else do they have? Is that Icarus? Firing on the Nidhogg, doing nothing. Sure. Wait, is that... That's actually a different one. That's a separate... I believe that's also an Icarus too. But that's a separate Icarus too. Okay, so now we know what their full lance composition is. We're going to come up here with the chameleon. Roger that. No shooting, just running. This hill here is slightly awkward for us, to be sure. Okay, that's fine. The Nidhogg doesn't move until phase 11, which I'm completely okay with. I'm receiving you. The Centurion will step up here. The question is, do we target any of these in particular? Honestly, it's going to be indirect fire anyway. And we have a good chance of hitting the rear arc over here. 12.1%. We'll take that. Taking the shot. Okay, that was mediocre. We did hit him, but I'm not sure exactly where. It looked more side arc to yeah. me. We're going to move the guillotine up over here and start climbing that hill next round. Okay. The Orion moves up, but does not fire. Now our harasser is going to make its way all the way up here. Although we're going to position here. All we can't right. really attack yet, and that's okay. Yeah. Next up, the Maxim is going to join it up over here. Again, we're going to position over on this side for purposes of LOS. Standing by. The Archer can definitely step up here. And this would be side arc on this guy, 0.9%, 3.3, 0.9, and 0.9. Not worth. Will not fire. Waiting for orders. The Jaeger will absolutely position here. And we'll take a look at these hit odds. 30% and 17. 30% on this Zeus. It only has 920 armor by default. This is pretty worthwhile, honestly. Oh, that was a nice CT hit. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, our Hunchy will absolutely join our mediums up over here. And next up is going to be our Striker. Now our Striker is going to also sprint up over here. I don't think sprinting was strictly necessary there. But we're not going to fire here. And now the J. Edgar is going to make its way all the way up here. Seven evasive pips. And from this angle, we'll go ahead and fire the vehicle flamers. Hopefully we'll get some heat in there. Doesn't look like we did. Oh, come on. That's fine. I don't mind. The Nidhogg 
I want it to come out over this way, I think. So we're going to sprint over here. We'll look at what our hit odds with the snub nose is. 19.3, 2.9. Yeah, that's to be expected. 32.7. Okay, we'll fire on the Zeus front arc. Maybe we get another CT hit here. Do we fire a rocket pack? That would spread the damage out pretty majorly unless we used Warlord. Which may not be the worst thing. We'll go ahead and use Warlord here. And we'll get those sweet, sweet clustering rolls. That was a structure exposure. Dropship coming in fast and low. Okay, so they're going to be dropping over here. That's ideal for us, actually. I really like that direction that they're coming from. The Chameleon is absolutely going to sprint forward here. I want this Zeus dead from this frontal arc firing. Okay, eight internal damage there. We destroyed a heat sink. That hit something good. Okay, our next mover is the Archer. And that is something I like. I was hopeful... Oh, we do have a direct LOS over here. We'll take that. Get in there. Some CT hits there. Nice. I think I hit something good. You absolutely did. A couple of CT hits. We're going to sprint the Chameleon in. And the Chameleon will also be fishing for those CT crits. That's a good hit there. Engine crit, but unfortunate, it's not dead. Panic level critical on the Zeus, though. It doesn't move until phase 16. We've got four more movers here. Okay, that's fine. Commander? We're going to move up the Centurion. Move order, and I would very much like to hit this guy with the sniper artillery, I think. Confirm. Ooh, that's a hit, too. Oh, that poor, poor Zeus. Is he going to eject? No. He did not eject, but he's extremely close to dead. Receiving you. Now, the Nidhogg is absolutely going to come out over this way. Heading out. Okay. I would love to hit this side arc on this Icarus 2, and I think we're going to go ahead and do that. On it. That was a lot of damage. Target taking a critical hit. That's a knockdown. And an arm destruction. Actually, that was a torso destruction. That's huge. That guy's super close to dead. We're going to step forward with the Jaeger here to this position. And, okay, that was an interesting camera zoom. We're going to see if we can finish off this Zeus. Nope. Okay. Didn't quite have the angle that we needed for that, I guess. The Hunchy will close in. And it will also look to finish off the Zeus. That Zeus is super close to dead. It's dead now. That's a kill. Excellent. So there's one assault down. A Zeus isn't much of an assault. It's like a heavy, but heavier. <laughs> but it's still an assault, technically. And, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily prefer to salvage it, but we'll get a couple parts, I think. So I'm going to send the J. Edgar up behind this Orion. And we'll look to finish him off. Not with the J. Edgar, of course. The J. Edgar is not going to kill him here. But his rear armor is pretty weak. And we'll just get him heated up a bit. Commander? Excellent. Now, where can the Maxim get to? There or here? I will choose here, and we will fire on this Icarus. This Icarus will likely die here. Extremely likely, in fact. We're not going to use Inferno Rounds. It's dead. Wonderful. Okay, next up, yeah. guillotine. That's fine. We will position here, to position. and we will just pot shot in the clan ER PPC. That's a hit. Into the leg. Okay, 
that's fine. The sensory impairment is still useful. The striker will come on up. We actually don't have LOS on him here. That's a little baffling, but okay. 21.2. We'll take it. A few hits. It's mostly to get that unsettled, was the point there. So that's actually a Shadow Hawk over here. That's really not very threatening. Yes, Commander. The Harasser is 100% going to come over here. And we're going to make this Orion super sad. Unfortunately, we can't get into the rear arc, but that's okay. okay. We'll heat this guy up a bit. And by a bit, I mean a lot. That was the AoE ammo, wasn't it? That may have been the AoE ammo. Our cat's paw is on the field. Okay. Well, we'll see if they take out this Shadowhawk for us. That would be nice. That's a heavy LRM carrier, a Shepherd, and a Copperhead Mark II. Okay. That's not ideal. We're going to close in on this guy with the Chameleon. Do we have indirect... Okay, we have direct LOS unbroken here. And we'll light this guy up a bit. He is pretty overheated. We'll close in with our other chameleon. This is broken LOS, but it should still be fine. Got it. We're mostly looking to push this guy to eject. Okay, phase 20, one of these guys move. Actually, we don't see which one, so there is a fourth one. Or no, it's that... Ah, the copperhead dropped in the same spot as this ballista. Okay, that's fine. We're going to move over this way with the Nidhogg, and we're going to sprint all the way over. We're going to look to drop a bomb on this center shepherd here. Got it. Those bombs went very, very wide. Made me sad. That has a sniper artillery on it. I would like that to die. That would be an ideal scenario. The guillotine will close in up here. And we're going to continue to hit this Orion. I think I am going to use the bolt on here to try to push him into ejecting. Just through volume of fire. He's hurting. He's now unsteady. The hunchback will step up. And with this Orion unsteady, that makes it easier for us to hit him. Okay, he's now panicked. Receiving you. The Jaeger will step up to here. Hopefully we don't backstab with the Gauss. With these hit odds, we shouldn't. One of those missed, which made me a little sad, but it's okay. Commander. And the J. Edgar will go ahead and hit him rear arc with additional flamers. Firing a full salvo. Okay, an additional flamer. The archer will also come forward. Rolling. I would love to see this Orion eject here. We're probably going to take out a torso and lose some parts here, but that's okay. Okay. AC-10 ammo destruction. We'll take it. Do the math, chief. One that is one dead Orion. Shadowhawk moves up. Fires on our harasser. Completely fails. That's not a surprise. Okay, the shepherd does absolutely nothing there. I'm here. The harasser? We're not going to engage the shadow hawk. The harasser is going to come on over here. I am going to go ahead and toss one round of flamers into this guy's rear arc, I think. Ah, these hit odds aren't good. We're not going to bother. The maxim, on the other hand, is going to bother. It's going to come in over here. Got it. Run, don't Get straight into that rear arc. Light him up. That's not very lit up, if I'm honest. But I guess it'll do. Yeah. Okay, our striker will continue to move up here. This position will be fine. I wouldn't mind... Let's see, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 12.1. The shepherd is actually our best hit odds. Roger. Okay, we got a hit. 
by. That is better than expected. The Centurion is going to move up over here. Location confirmed. And we're going to drop a sniper artillery over here and hope we hit something. Okay. Just fire in their general vicinity. Okay. We did manage to, to hit the vehicle with the sniper artillery, so that's nice. These guys haven't bothered to shoot yet. I can't help but notice. We're going to take our chameleon up to here. To At this range, are we going to bother shooting? Actually, yeah, we can shoot at the guy with the sniper artillery and have quasi-decent hit odds and still sink heat. We hit one of them. We'll take it. Excellent. Order. The second chameleon is going to follow suit. 23.3? Or 22.3, rather. Ooh, and we hit that one, too. We absolutely take those. Ready. The Nidhogg is going to position probably somewhere around here, although I don't like this position, because we don't actually have a firing arc on the, on the ballista. Maybe we put position over here instead. Nope, that's still bad. Here? Here. We'll go ahead and ECM jam all of them, and we'll drop bombs on this guy. Wonderful. Sniper artillery does not get to be used against us. That's exactly what we were looking for there. What do you need? And the guillotine will advance over this way. Going full and sink heat. Waiting for orders. The archer will step up over here, and let's take a look at hit odds. Our hit odds are 1.5, 10.9, 5.1. We'll take the 10.9. Yeah, it's not going to do very much, but we also don't need it to do very much, in all honesty. Okay, the J. Edgar will absolutely come in over here and engage the Shadowhawk. Hit odds aren't great, but that's okay. And that's three misses. That's okay. The Hunchy will come up over this way. We're not going to move all the way up for LOS purposes. The Jaeger will position up over here. We're just trying to sprint up and get LOS with these heavies. And then it is the Harasser's turn. And the Harasser will absolutely position over here. The question is, which of these do we go for? Do we go for the Shepherd with the AoE ammo? Do we try to just straight up kill the heavy LRM carrier? And that's exactly what we do. This is an LRM-80. This LRM carrier is pretty dead. Fire all oh, and we even stray shot it over here. We didn't kill that heavy LRM carrier, sadly. Copperhead firing on the Nidhogg, but that's okay. I did think that that LRM carrier was going to die there. Sadly, we didn't quite get the damage that we needed. The Centurion, however, might be able to get what we need. We'll see. Copy that, Commander. Reporting serious armor loss. Okay. So, I mean, we hit the harasser there. We were angling to hit into this torso. Sadly, it looks like we hit literally everywhere else, but that's, I guess, fine. We're going to move up with the striker and see if we can continue to put missiles into this weak side. This is the weak side. So, okay. let's see. That's a negative. Okay. Phase 14, the Shepherd moves, takes burn damage, fires on the Harasser. It does a little bit there. I'm under heavy fire. Yeah, you're okay. Shadowhawk fires on the Maxim and does some damage. I didn't really see the positioning there. If we can get the Maxim behind the Shadowhawk, I think it dies. And it is the Maxim's turn, and yes, we do get behind the Shadowhawk. This is a dead Shadowhawk, I'm pretty sure. If we have decent rolls here. Okay, that wasn't the best of rolls. But it's okay. 
And this is what we were hoping to avoid. That's a lot of missiles. It's fine, though. Once the Nidhogg moves, which it should move basically, not quite now, but very close to it, this chameleon can step forward. The Nidhogg is going to be attacking these guys with the bombs, probably dropping the bombs on the Shepherd, honestly. So I think we're going to angle up and fire on the Shadowhawk side arc here. We did get some internal damage there. That's great. We're going to move up with this chameleon as well. This one is the one that did just take damage. So we're going to vigilance it. And then we're also going to attack this Shadowhawk. That's 30 more damage into, I believe that's the leg. Okay, that's completely fine. The guillotine will go ahead and start climbing the hill. As will the Jaeger. Well, actually, Roger. the Jaeger will position here. And we'll toss some Gauss rifles into this Shadowhawk's side arc. Roger. Okay, we'll miss the Gauss rifles. Sad. It's like a 73% chance on each roll. But that's okay. Receiving the Nidhogg, at this point, will absolutely position somewhere like here. And this is... Is this strong side or weak side on the heavy LRM carrier? This is weak side. I'm actually going to position and fire on the shepherd here with the bomb racks. And hope that the splash damage goes in there. Yes. Two for the price of one. That's what we're looking for. Wonderful. Okay, the archer is going to step up over here. And the archer's hit target is very obviously not this copperhead. It's obviously this Shadowhawk. Okay, a hip destruction there. It's not the best, but he did panic, so we'll take that, I guess. The Hunchy can go ahead and move up to this position and continue putting fire into this weak side arc. That's probably a leg destruction. Oh, AC5 ammo explosion. We'll take that. We will absolutely take that. The Centurion will continue to advance over here. And we'll just lob an artillery indirect at this copperhead. Probably not going to hit anything, but uh, yeah, that didn't hit anything. That's okay. Yep. The Striker will come up. Actually, this is direct LOS side arc. This is a reasonable position. Yeah, decent armor reduction there. The Copperhead will move now, and we'll see what it decides to do. Fires on the Harasser doesn't really do anything. It could have killed the Harasser, to be clear. But we wouldn't have really cared if it had. That would have been fine. Can we get into rear arc? No, side arc will have to do. Double time. Let's go. That's fine. I copy. Okay. Eh, we set it on fire a little bit. Waiting for orders. And the harasser, this would be flames on the way. This would not be flames on the way. Up over here. Do it. Affirmative. The harasser may be able to finish this off. Yeah, it's possible, actually. If we get decent rolls on these flamers, it may or may not happen. And it did. Fantastic. Let's get out of here. So really only the one assault. And there was the assault vehicle, I suppose, but... The vehicle wasn't very threatening. So maybe we get some Zeus parts. Maybe we get some Orion parts. We'll see. I'm not too enthused about a Zeus, honestly. I, I think it's kind of a mediocre mech. But maybe this one has good hard points or something. We took very little damage. And let's see. Yeah, the heavy LRM carrier was technically the assault. There was the Orion. We can always grab an Orion part. I'm always reasonably happy to do that. Only a single Zeus part. Okay. A binary laser. Fuse two large laser cores together, allowing them to be fired together. Interesting. Damage was still lower than firing two large lasers separately. So it does 75 damage, 11 stability, 52 heat, 9 tons. 
Huh. 15 variable damage as well. Let's grab that. I would love to have some of these LRM-20 Zeus's. They do have that jam chance, but that's reasonable, reasonably okay. Is there anything else in here that we need? Hmm. Not particularly. So we'll just go ahead and grab an LRM-20 Zeus, I think. And we'll confirm that. Excellent. So, I mean, the AC-5, do we need more AC-5s? Not exactly. Large Laser Trinell, we'll keep that one around. LRM-5, out of here. Machine guns, out of here. Basic cockpit, no thanks. Internal combustion engine, nope. Primitive FCS, basic sensors, no thanks. We'll keep the AC-5 ammo, I guess. We only have one on hand. Extended range LRM ammo. Now that's interesting. We'll keep that around. We may see fit to put that on our archer. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that one. The real question is how much damage did we take? And the answer is I think very, very little, all things considered. The chameleon took a little bit. Our harasser took some, but maybe eight. 18,000 absolute maximum is what I'm expecting here. We'll see what Yang has to say about it. He usually proves me wrong almost immediately, but that's my expectation. It's absolute maximum 18k. In reality, probably more along the lines of 12k. Okay, Yang, I hate you. <laughs> 23k. Regardless, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we will definitely get these mechs repaired and head on out again. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>